So it's a pleasure to be here and to present to you the speech titled Biogas and Anaerobic Digestion, Anaerobic Wastewater Treatment. And uh, I will try to make some uh, explanation about the status and uh, the future about uh, anaerobic digestion for a circular based economy. So as you all know, the linear view of, of uh, production processes and agricultural processes is, uh, is not the best way to do it. Just an illustration here. If we look at agriculture and if you want to make fertilizer with the Aberbosch process, you will convert uh, ammonia to fertilizers. And for this, you need two liters of oil per kilograms of nitrogen. And at the end, you recover 40% uh, of this as food or feed and which part of it will end up in a wastewater treatment plant. And in order to, to treat this ammonia and to convert it back to nitrogen, you need again, two liter of, of, of oil per kilogram of nitrogen. So this yields uh, quite a waste of energy. And in order to go better, uh, you need to go circular and to give value to our waste. The waste could be either gaseous waste, liquid waste, or solid waste, which can be converted into water, uh, clean water, energy fertilizers, and high value molecules. And uh, what is in the middle, it's environmental biorefinery. And in this context, anaerobic digestion, which will convert bio waste from either agriculture, food industry, or, or cities, into biogas and then convert it either to electricity, heat, biogas that can be used as a biofuel or injected in the gas grid, and also uh, digestate uh, is a key process. So this was in the, in the context of know-how. And uh, how can we improve this process? The first thing is to pre-treat either chemically, physically, or biologically uh, the feedstocks in order to unlock the methane potential of the, of the waste. Then you can have, uh, you have the digester and you can intensify it by monitoring and uh, adapted and relevant uh, optimization approaches. And the post uh, treatment will be uh, to recover uh, fertilizers. The first aspect is what do we really know about bio waste? And, and uh, BMP, which is a biomethane potential, is not enough. Indeed, there is a, the first step of, the, of anaerobic digestion is hydrolysis. And hydrolysis refers to all mechanisms that make slowly biodegradable substrate available for bacterial growth. And in fact, behind this, there are three main concepts, bioaccessibility, bioavailability, and biodegradability. And even though uh, waste can be biodegradable, it can be not easily bioaccessible or bioavailable. Just to illustrate this, I, I made a compare, I mean, if you compare a peach or a coconut, well, the hard part in the coconut is in the outside, so it will be much less bioaccessible than the pitch uh, to the bacteria. So in order to solve this problem, we, we developed some techniques uh, combining chemical extraction and, and uh, spectro, spectral techniques to characterize it. Here you have a, an example of the BMP uh, prediction based on near infrared spectroscopy. And you can see that you can predict it quite well. And uh, in order to do this, of course, you need a large number of substrate to calibrate your, your, your model behind this technique. And if you combine this with modeling, you can get very nice results. Uh, this is an example of, of a digester, uh, full-scale digester, and what you can see here, you have the COD, you have the VFA, and uh, you have the alkalinity. 
and uh, in in blue, I mean the dots are the experimental points, and the line are the model, the dynamic model that was was developed based on the near infrared characterization of the waste. And you can see that you can predict quite well and quite precisely the dynamic of the process. This will lead to a good understanding of the dynamics and also a, a nice tool to control the process uh, in real time. So of course, <coughs> methane uh, is a nice product, but is it the only one that can be obtained from this? Here you have the uh, metabolic network of anaerobic, anaerobic digestion, where you have hydrolysis as the first step, then acidogenesis, acetogenesis, and methanogenesis. Oops. Uh, I don't know, I see another screen. Someone uh, has oh, shared the Unintentionally share his her screen, so he, her, he or she has interrupted the presentation of Jean-Philippe. Okay. So, I okay. think you can go now. Sh share it again. <laughs> okay. Sorry, sorry for this uh, technical uh, that's okay. Uh, well, you have the, do you see it again? Yeah? Yes, yes. perfect. Yes. Yeah, so this is a metabolic network of, of uh, anaerobic digestion. And if you apply uh, either a heat shock to the inoculum, or if you apply a low pH, around 5.5, or very short hydraulic retention time, you favor the first steps and you, uh, you can stop the methanogenesis step and in this way, you will produce either acetate or butyrate, some volatile fatty acids, but also uh, uh, CO2 and hydrogen. And this is what we, we have been involved in the know-how project. Uh, the, the task were to characterize venases from Innocent partner, and, and then to op optimize and model hydrogen production based on this, step, on this approach, either on lab scale, but also at uh, the pilot scale. And in, in for this, we collaborated with um, Italian and, and Danish partners uh, to, in, the con in the context of know-how. And this is a picture of the combined hydrogen here at the top of, of, the, of the process here of the pilot scale. And, and anaerobic digestion together and in operation with Vinacid. And the main challenge were to combine, to uh, uh, optimize and stabilize the ratio of, of hydrogen and methane production. Then what could be some ideas for the future? The, the first thing is here you have well, uh, a dark fermentation, that is a process of producing hydrogen. And uh, what you have, it's you, you have a carbon source, you use temperature, pH, or organic loading rate to favor, for example, uh, hydrogen. But also what you can do is you can, you can uh, put some electrodes uh, in, the, in the reactor and where you will apply uh, some difference of, of potential uh, between these electrodes. And this, in this way, uh, based on the applied potential, you will either favor some routes for some specific uh, production or create potentially new routes to have new molecules at the end. And this is uh, quite, uh, this is called electro fermentation because what you have at the cathode, for example, you, you, pro you produce some electrons that will uh, be used by the by the microbes in green here to to make some products and the products can be very different. So this is one way to control and to favor some specific routes in the metabolic network and to uh, emphasize the production of some high value molecules. And just an illustration: uh, this is different products that can be obtained either by classical dark fermentation 
or done fermentation with some electrodes, and you can see that your, the roots are different. And if you also combine this electro fermentation with some uh, uh, specific bacteria, electro fermentative bacteria, and that can be added, you can increase even more the difference. So is there any other opportunities uh, besides this? Uh, the first thing is anaerobic digestion, for, of course, can be used to, to make the energy production more flexible. It's indeed very difficult to, to store electricity, but biogas can be stored and can be used as a, as a way to, to, to make a system based on the demand-driven energy and uh, based on the different feeding strategy and type of substrate you use, you can lower the, the peak and uh, be more uh, st stable in, uh, in terms of energy production, electricity production. The second way is to combine anaerobic digestion with uh, electrolysis, water electrolysis, and in this case you produce on one way biogas and on the other process H2, and this you combine it with uh, with a methanation process and you will have a very clear clean uh, biogas con containing like 95 percent here of the methane so in this case you have two processes anaerobic digestion and water electrolysis <laughs> but you can do this also inside uh, the reactor the anaerobic digester and this in this way you, you add either substrate or and H2 and uh, you have here power to biogas to make more methane out of the substrate. And you have some uh, challenges here uh, that can be solved in order to make this very efficient. The key aspects here is uh, the gas and electricity networks can talk to each other. And, uh, and this is a big change uh, for us because uh, you can use a natural gas network as a storage of energy. And in France, uh, just the, the, the grid is about, uh, the gas grid is about four months of electricity being used in France. So you can, you can, uh, you can uh, combine this gas grid with electricity needs, and you can uh, play on the different processes in the middle to make it more, more stable again. You have some trends in, in Europe. Uh, here you have some, some values for different countries. The key message here is most of the country go to methane being injected in the gas grid. And, uh, and this is uh, an important aspect for the anaerobic digestion field. What could be the long-term future? So this is some idea I put, I put uh, for discussion. The first one is, if you think about the, the whole process, one uh, specific uh, and interesting aspect could be to have a very dedicated source separation. And in this case, uh, you can either go to anaerobic digestion, but also you can combine it with a network of different processes, which will be very specific according to the sorted waste. And then you can have very, uh, very dedicated and very specific production of the molecules and the product you want. It can be either, of course, electricity, heat, biogas, but also many different bio-based organic chemicals. This is one way. So source separation, uh, a cascade and a network of different processes, very specific for and very dedicated to the different waste. The other way is uh, totally the opposite. Indeed, methane is not just a fuel, it's also a chemical feedstock. And you have some studies that are uh, studying uh, the way to convert methane to different bioproducts. And this can be uh, done biologically, and this is on another aspect that could be that could uh, increase in the in the future. 
just to conclude, because uh, time is running, uh, another message I want to emphasize is never forget Mother Nature. Here you have in, um, in the horizontal line, the different technology of anaerobic digestion you can have. And in the vertical line, you, can, you have the performance of each processes. And according to the waste fit, you can achieve high uh, organic loading rate, like 70 kilograms COD per cubic meter and per day, uh, if it's liquid and very biodegradable. If it's solid and slowly biodegradable, you will reach five, 10 maximum. But if you look in nature, well, it's, uh, you have a big step. The, the cow is about 200 kilograms COD per cubic meter per day, if you use it as a reactor. And the most efficient is a termite, which can achieve 400. So you have a big step here. So we were curious to, to understand what was the reason behind this uh, big difference and to be like inspired by, by mother nature. So what we did is we studied the different uh, digestive tracts of different uh, animals, 192 different animals, and we uh, tried to understand if it was due to the feedstock being used, or the the host and the and the way it, it is operated, quote unquote, or the design of the digestive tract. Just few results, very few results. Um, according to where you are in the digestive tract, you have either batch reactor, a CSTR, CSTR in series, or plug flow reactor. And just to show it, to show the impact of, of the design, in terms of volumes, if you go from carnivorous to omnivorous and herbivorous, this could be Greedily biodegradable substrate, it could be slowly biodegradable substrate. Well, in general, what you have is you have for the herbivores, you have a big reactor at the beginning, uh, whereas in terms of volume, you have only 20% of the volume uh, at the beginning for carnivores. And, and the impact of this design is shown here. Here you have two classical herbivores, like the cow and the llama. Here you have the oasin. The oasin is a bird, which it's the only bird that produces methane. And you can see that the, the digestive tract design is quite close of cow and llama and completely different of other birds. Whereas kangaroos, which is an herbivore that is not producing any methane, has a process design configuration quite different. So the idea behind this is um, to say that we could be inspired by nature to, to make process more efficient and optimized. And with this, I want to thank you for your attention. If, if you have any questions, I would be very pleased to answer.